So I'm preparing to sell my scale electric sets that I've had since I was, I don't know, 10 onwards really. So probably around about 40 years old, some of these things. So I just wanted to record them really um, for nostalgia more than anything else. And just wondered if somebody else would like to see them as well. So I'm going to go through the cars first, um, probably in order that I actually got them, if I can remember correctly. Uh, and then I'll move on to some accessories and then on to some sets as well. And other bits and bobs. So this was the first mini set I ever had. Uh, a rally cross mini set with the uh, bank curves along the bottom here. Uh, two cars, a red and yellow one. And a checkerboard start line and some edging around here as well. Uh, so that was the first set I ever had. And I've managed to find, I've still got that set, uh, not the box or anything like that, but I've still got the parts and everything else. Just missing the yellow uh, mini, but I still do have the red one. Um, the red one is still here. It's not in bad condition, really. It's had a few extra kind of transfers put on it. Um, it's lost the registration plate on the front here. Um, but otherwise, it's not in bad condition, really. So that was the kind of first set I ever had. And then I kind of just added to them after that, to be honest. So the next set, the next cars that I then had, I remember having um, a Porsche here. Uh, this Porsche was, well, it's been heavily used really. It didn't have light up lights at the time, but these were just extra stickers that I seem to have adorned on it, really. Um, obviously no magnets on the bottom on this early stage to hold it on the track. Um, a really kind of noisy, crazy uh, Porsche, to be honest. And so that was the next one that I had. And then after that was the time of the TR7. And my dad actually had a TR7. I can't remember what colour it was. A C130. This is Triumph TR7 still in the box. Um, this was bought around the same time as the actual uh, Porsche that you just saw. Number six on the side of this. It's had a few extra Texaco stickers put on the roof by the looks of it. Um, still in pretty good condition, to be honest, for the age. Um, used to use this quite a lot. Again, no magnets or anything on the bottom. Um, pretty noisy and uh, hard to control car these days on the track, I must admit. Um, and then after that one... Wow, one of the early ones I do remember, and this is still in the original case, actually. Um, this was a John Player Special car. The case is a bit broken now. So, this is the car. This was brilliant. I mean, the speed of this and the way it's stuck to the track. Um, it's all here as well. There's no missing parts on it. It still works. Uh, really nice car that was. Um, John Player Special. Didn't really get into the Formula One stuff. Didn't have Formula One cars really of any any type. Really went for the kind of uh, rally cars and things more than anything else. Then I think it must have been um, the Police Rover to be honest. Still in pretty good condition. Still got the wing mirrors on there. Um, noisy little thing. Lights still light up. Uh, yeah, Police Rover. Classic car, really. No box on that one. So that's just unboxed. Then something a bit different. Slot stocks, a stick shifter. Uh, this was a lot of fun, actually. Um, the bottom, all the bits falling off it. The bottom um, would spin round. The bottom rotates round. So the car would actually do uh, a 180 and go back the other way around. If you gave it a little burst of power. Um, you can take off the bonnet as well. You'd find that they were kind of smashing about and things as well. The only thing I seem to have lost on this, there was a number on the top and that seems to have vanished and I can't find that anywhere. And it looks like I've broken this top, this front corner piece off. But they were kind of designed to be smashed together. I didn't have a second one. I didn't go for the, I think it was a yellow one at the time. Um, I didn't go for that one. I just had a red one. And then coming a bit more, or oh, actually, Time for another Porsche, actually. Boxed uh, C289, Porsche with lights in gold, 995 at the time. 
Um, this was kind of because we'd already got one. I think we wanted another Porsche really. Uh, and this one had the light up lights on the front, which still work. Um, it's pretty good condition. No stickers were really put on it at the time. I think it was kind of more my dad's one actually. Um, no magnets on the bottom still, um, but quite a nice example of that Porsche. And coming up a bit more to up to date um, was the BMW. So. This is the BMW C5713318i Autosport number 16 uh, in the box. Have I got a price on that one? 19.99. God, it doubled in price from that last box. Uh, yeah, so this was actually, I remember having this on a windowsill for a long time. I think that's why the, uh, the wheels might have gone a bit yellowy on this one and the roof and on the colors. Um, this one has got a magnet line on the bottom to hold it onto the track a bit better. The only disadvantage was there was um, the I've just glued this on the back. The actual spoiler on the back was actually had come off, so I've just had to glue that back on. That was a bit of a shame, really, because I thought it was kind of still pristine in the box. But never mind, that's been fixed. And then my sister got me this Aston Martin. It's got the part of the Top Gear range, I believe. Got the Stig in there driving it, if you can see that. Yeah, top gear on the back. Uh, I don't know if it's missing uh, wing mirrors or not, and that was sort of given to me. So I have no idea about that one. And then one, uh, one final car that I have no clue about, uh, really. It's this one, actually, this is in the box of the Aston Martin. So the Aston Martin should... <laughs> go in that box actually uh, we seem to have well it looks like a uh, a Daytona race kind of car really from the front that's all I'm going on I do not know much about this uh, it's quite cheaply made by the feel of it and there's no magnets on the bottom either um, so Yeah, I got given that because I did not buy that. Wouldn't be my choice for this one. Maybe you can tell me a bit about that in the comments below if you know anything about it. So now for some accessories. Uh, this was a real popular add-on that I'd forgotten that I'd actually even bought. The lights still work. And you wound it up and um, you powered the lights via the two cables and then you press the stoppers and the starters on the top and you just wound it up for a horrific noise and you'd wait for it to then go on green and then you'd go so i've got the auto start as well and the track for that i'll take that out of the way and then i also found in the box um, the original shell uh, grandstand although the one of these has I think that one's all right actually that side this one hasn't this one this one is actually um, broken off which is a bit of a shame again but otherwise this is still connected um, so yeah so the original shell grandstand as well this is the suitcase that I keep everything in or did do when it wasn't in a set so I've got various kind of uh, stickers and original things in here. And then this was the, I guess you can still buy this. This was to join up the old track type uh, with the circular holes in it with the new track type that kind of slid in. I had to buy that when uh, some to add the old track, or sorry, the new track onto the old track section. Um, these were edge pieces actually for some part of the track. So if you on a really chicane, tight chicane piece, I remember. So they go with that set. So your wheels would roll over this bit because the lines would be, or the track lines would be on right onto one side. So there's various um, straight pieces in here. I think this was the chicane part actually because it's got the holes for the straw bales and things. Quite a lot of straights I had actually. And there's the other end of the chicane. 
I believe. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the chicane pieces in two halves there. So you went right up to the edge of the track. And then uh, that would go alongside there so that your wheels wouldn't just fall off the edge of the track. And there's the other half. Oh, here's the original. Do you remember the original mini checkerboard plate, start plate? Yeah. That was that part. Oh yeah, this piece. I remember this piece, this was a classic piece. Coming together, <laughs> knocking each other off, one in first. Seem to have another powered section for some reason. Oh, and a start area as well. They must have been from one of the sets. Otherwise, just normal edge pieces. And then I would have bought, oh yeah, some more chicane half pieces. Um, and then I would have bought this as well separately. This is pretty nice. Lap counter. I used to use that a lot and go through um, the lap, set it back to zero, just lift the knob and turn to reset. Really simple, but it was a really nice way of recording how many uh, laps you'd done when you were kind of practicing on your own. Several uh, original controllers. Some of them, have, I think one might be faulty, probably the one that's in this original box. Power pack still works, the original power pack. And then there's just lots and lots and lots of um, corner pieces, although these are the original uh, mini banked pieces. It used to come off the floor a little bit to give you a bank curve that I remember as well. So that's basically what's in that track box. Now you couldn't escape from and not use scale electrics without having uh, barriers on and, they, and, the, and the pieces in here they always used to snap off didn't they i mean i must have hundreds in here oh, look here's one with both of them missing um the bottom feet they never stuck on but there's quite a few of those in there to be honest as well and then there's my kind of box of other bits and bobs uh, depending on what sets you had they always things like this black ones and grey ones here. These were to raise the track up for kind of flyovers and things. Um, so you kind of put those across the track. And then chicane pieces. I'm just gonna go through these box of bits really. Some of those chicane sets had things like that uh, going through. And then you have um, the straw bales, the cones, and all sorts and then these were some of my favorite things actually these were just jumps that you would put in the middle of the track to have your car actually go over i found them a lot of fun i did have accessories one accessory set of actual um characters as well uh, although i would be a bit mad as a as a, i can't remember what age i would just paint them so i've got a woman here and i've painted her just really badly in an enamel paint was to had some left over from like an airfix kit and i've painted her in kind of red and blue and i've given that, that guy a blue hat and that guy a red hat um and and the same again with this guy which is a bit of a shame really but i suppose as a kid you kind of don't think about um the future and this guy holding the placard the number sign he's gone completely blue so there you go so i did have a few accessories And there's obviously in an early catalogue a picture of the uh, the auto start box as well. Although I think mine just had an English uh, flag. Oh, sorry, English, Great British flag on the top. It's amazing when you saw the back of some of these catalogues and you saw these like you know eight lane uh, eight lane sets. You think, oh god, that would be amazing to put like eight line eight uh, tracks together. So I'm just having a look through here. Oh, this was another one. A Formula One set with a bank curve again and a flyover. Yeah, see that flyover. Here were some of the original cars. Here's the Mini up there. That was actually from the set. And the Escort, very nice. And the Datsun down here as well. 
Oh look, the John Player Special, but it looks... Is it the same as mine? It looks slightly different to mine, actually. Yeah. I used to love the cars with the double wheels on the back. Oh look, there's the minis again. I think you had to buy that humpback bridge flyover. And these were all they did at the time, I think, on this. Look, this is the lap counter that I had. And they used to give you ideas of what tracks you could build up and what you needed to build them up. Still got some of these paper speed and uh, lap count. Look at that one, super speed set. <laughs> Just two banked curves. Everything's like off the ground probably with that one. Um, every, everything's tilted on this one. And again, Grand Prix set. I mean, look at that. It's just all banks with a figure eight. And then back to that mini one again. That was 1982 on the top there. 23rd edition. It's now in kind of pieces. Um, some of these I would read and read and read. Oh, that's the wrong way around. And they came out with these uh, computer banks as well, they were really, really smart. Never had one of those. Oh yeah, yep, 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 yep. Here's the uh, grandstand that I showed you earlier. Dunlop Bridge grandstand. That was probably the accessory kit I actually had with the figures in it. A lap counter, and then the auto start as well. You can just kind of zoom in here. Well, I can zoom in here, bring it to you. Here's the uh, chicane set as well. That I showed early bits of with the uh, straw bales. There's black and white fences. I remember having those, but I haven't got them anymore. So I don't know what happened to those. They were also very smart as well, having the sort of red and white, red and white uh, edging on those on the straw bales for the Formula One cars. Never had those. They looked really smart. I'll just run through a bit more of this catalog actually. This is quite fun looking through these before I just talk to you about sets that I've got. So here's another mini set, a banger racer set. Even had a little tunnel. You used to make your own tunnels out of cardboard. You used to use these shoebox used to do really well. You could just cut some holes in either end and put lay that over the track and sort of hide the track or run it under the sofa. And out the other side, here's a double set of rovers on here. Oh, and there's the set for a Looks like it was a set, yeah, super stock set, C662, um, with two, the yellow and the red. Obviously I bought mine um, separately, my red one separately. But that looked a good fun set. Bits flying off everywhere. Oh look, they even had, they even used to put the um, up and down on that one. Probably because you could spin the car around and go up and down at either side of the ramps. Formula One set, C658, World Championships. Oh, I love those Love those with the double wheels on the back. Oh, and look, Porsche, gold and silver Porsche set. Le Mans 24 hour, C664. Yeah, that's very nice. Obviously the gold Porsche is um, what I just showed you earlier in my cars. Super Formula cars. And so I wasn't really into the Formula One stuff, but uh... oh, classic Metros, McCain Metro, <laughs> and the Leyland Metro. Oh look, the boots, the boot opened up as well on that one. And a couple of Rovers as well. Triplex. Ah, TR7. And a BMW on the top there. And a Porsche Turbo in green. Porsche Turbo in gold and a Ford Capri. Oh, yes. Ford Capri with flames on the front of it. 
Very nice. With lights as well. Oh, don't, don't forget the Ford Escort on the bottom. That had lights as well. Yep, so there's my gold Porsche with the lights on. And trucks, wow. I mean, this was something I never thought you'd see through scale electrics. Um, actual low loaders and actual trucks. Um, I never had this, so I would not know what they were like to drive. Um, I guess they probably got caught up if you designed a track with really tight bends and things like that, um, just due to the length of them. Yeah, I've got the minis and the sidecars. Did play on people's sets with sidecars on, I never had any. They were quite fast and fun. And then again, we've got the singles on the bottom with the uh, stock cars. And at the end, the Police Rover, which is the version that I have got. And then pictures of all the cars together on one page. And the old cars as well. On there. Oh, never saw, never really saw much of those. On the trucks on the end. Okay, let's keep going. Here's the old cars, a bit more in depth with those. Bentley and the Alfa Romeo. Oh, and there's my chicane set there on the left. Again, the green section of grass and the straw bales. And then there are pieces missing out of this of what tracks you could get. More cars, more of the basic more cars here, really, with the TR7s and the minis and things. And I remember that was in a lot of sets, a very sort of cheap, plasticky kind of Formula, Formula 1 set. And obviously in these magazines, a lot of these to have things about how to build your own kind of set uh, coming out on the wall so you didn't have to have it there all the time and kind of building it. Paper mache's and, you know, I think that was the accessory set I had. Anyway, I'm going to glance over a lot of this. And then there was always track designs in the back that you could build up because you needed some ideas if you couldn't work it out yourself. If you wanted to create classic tracks as well, look Monte Carlo and Brands Hatch tracks and layouts in there as well. In this copy here, this I used to read this all the time. Speedmaster in the race of death. So we had a comic in this one as well. The police rover featured in it as well. Oh, look, the computers. Fuel tank. C451. Uh, soundtrack. C450. And finally, the think tank. C452. And you could buy all three of those. If you were very lucky. Formula One set. Yeah, the Sidecars 500 TT set. C642. The Super Stock set, yeah, new C662. More comics and then more cars. We also saw, saw those cars a minute ago, I think. Oh, look, they included the... Oh, they always included bits. Obviously, had to include the cars. Look, included the slots... The, the stock cars in here as well so that got you revved up for buying your own uh, edition or your own cars look we've got the grandstand in here oh brilliant um, we've got the uh, quick start at the top here as well with the lights so it all kind of uh, fitted well into what you what they sold and what you actually had or didn't have <laughs> a lot of the time now the police rover on this one has changed. Obviously, there was a, a round light on the top. I wonder if they kind of changed that. Because my version doesn't have that. It just had a, a bit of a newer uh, look to it. 
And that's that. So this was one of the sets that I was given. This was um, my niece's set, I think. So it was well used. And I think there's only one. No, actually both minis are in here, actually. Um, includes super tough resistant cars, it says here. So tough enough for full impact racing. A blue and a red in a city speed. So let's have a look in here. Get the cellophane off. And then all the bits and bobs. So we've got details about the advanced track system. Um, so the track system was changed in this one to those kind of clips. Six cars on your Scalectrix track. Are you ready? Scalectrix Digital. No, I kind of never was. Um, 2007. Well, this has got lots of things in it. I was really kind of not really all oh, look, a Range Rover and Countach and all sorts of things in there. But I was not into a bit older then. Um, and they obviously re brought out the grandstands and things like that as well. Different track, weird bits and bobs that I never had in that year, anyway, in those years. So, this is mainly the track uh, power supply, uh, newer hand controllers, and two minis the red with like a spider's web on the top. Although both are missing their wing mirrors by the looks of it. So they were uh, well bashed and played for, played with. I expect they were probably one of the first things that... Oh no, that's got one wing mirror. That one's got a wing mirror. Uh, just not the left hand side where you can see it's kind of been wrenched off. Um, on that one. But uh, yeah, so that's that set. Not much to say about that set really. I probably just used it as... Um, for spare track more than anything else. Although it has got lots and lots and lots of paper, original paperwork with it. The next set was a TVR challenge. Now this was my niece's set and I know this because um, one car's missing and one is absolutely trashed. Um, so we've got TVRs in here, a red and a black one. This time it's just a straight lid off the top. There's one piece of track with the uh, edging that's a bit broken i've got some long crisscross pieces so i'll just have to probably get rid of this with ju as just a set for the track only um, again the same kind of hand controllers on here and one poor old looking tvr which um looks like it's had better days very muddy on the bottom so what these kids young children young girls did with that i do not know uh, and it's missing the front off of it as well which is a real shame um, and the, otherwise, it's not too bad a condition. Um, the other car is missing completely from the set. So, I don't know what happened to that. Now, this one, it's rally set. I basically had, I was kind of in my 20s, I think. Or no, I might have been 30. Um, my dad won Christmas just suddenly for no, I didn't give him any hints, no reason. Went out for Christmas and bought me a... Um, bought this set and I thought wow that's different um, thank you very much sort of reliving my childhood again and obviously it's quite a important set looking back on it really I have played with it a few times and took it around a friend's house and played with it because we've got the Impreza and the Toyota Corolla on here as well and it's the Colin McRae Impreza on here as well so the, the track was really simple it was a 1.8 uh, meters by 80 centimeter track a uh, really flat just kind of an, an a rectangular kind of track set but i suppose what's important in this one is really the cars to be honest um, so if we have a look at it i mean i've kept the original this is probably the best kept one really um all the decals on the car some of them i've put on some of them i've left um and it talks about the circuit as well as i say it was a really um simple kind of uh, circuit to be honest quite a beginner's set um, again the same controllers in there power supply a few banked corners edges and then the power base and a few straights but let's really just have a look at the cars to be honest um, the wheels have gone a bit yellowy uh, I don't know what uh, probably because it was packed away um, so this is Saints and Moya on this one
I say this set has been used, but it's not been bashed about or anything out. It's been really well looked after. And then on to Colin McRae Subaru. Nice gold wheels. Number three on the side. And hopefully you can see that on the uh, back mirror. Krista McRae on there. And with the metallic, uh, with the magnet right on the bottom there. So that's that set as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.